namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Theravada Buddhism series, Dhamma talk number 87, events before and after the ninth rain retreats at Gosambi. Three wealthy men from the Gonsambi city of Vamsa's kingdom invited the Buddha to recite at Gosita Monastery near Gosambi for the night rain retreat. Buddha's life had its challenges. Devadatta, his cousin, tried to assassinate him three times. Once, one of his uncles became drunk and blocked his way. And also at Kosambi city at the night rain retreat, he met a crowd throwing stones and cursing at the Buddha and the monks. That didn't happen spontaneously. Ma Gandhi, a favored wife of King Udena of Kosambi, organized a group because she didn't like Buddha. The monk suggested to Ananda, Buddha's cousin, that they avoid this place and seek another. Upon hearing the suggestions from Ananda, the Buddha asked, what arrangements they would make in the event of encountering another unwelcoming group at the next place. The only answer was, move to another place, move to another place. The Buddha told the monks, if there are good people, there will always be bad people. It is natural. If one faces problems, facing them and not running away from them, is essential. Facing issues, challenges and difficulties skillfully help 
to resolve them. Give you more experience, give you more experience and know how to handle it. Buddha and the monks stayed in Konsabi, Kosambi, continued doing what they always did, non-reactive and composed. going about with Dharma as it would be. They supported all those who approach the Buddha by teaching them how to avoid unwholesome actions and do wholesome activities that benefits many. Eventually, the organized protests die down and the Buddha spent his night rain retreat at Gosita Monastery, which is located near the city of Gosambi. And the Buddha taught Dharma to people and monks alike daily. Right after the night rain retreat at Kosita Monastery, a disagreement between two groups of monks arose based on a trivial offense committed by the monk. Okay, trivial offense. What offense mean is the Buddha, whenever a certain situation or condition arises to remedy it, the Buddha lay down a rule whenever it arose. And those rules with time collectively grew. And if a monk break these rules, it is called offense. Okay? Offense. In this case, one of the monk used a self-cleaning water pot in an outhouse. They have to clean it whenever they finish using it. So there's always a pot of water, a pot for water. And after he used it, he left the remaining water in it. As one of the leading monks, okay, the monks too, they are always leaders and followers in everywhere. One of the leading monk, well versed in Vinaya discipline. Vinayas are the rules that the Buddha set down whenever a situation called for it and collectively call it Vinaya. Or just call it disciplines, set of disciplines or rules. That monk called out the offense because the monk who used the outhouse left some water in the pot after he used it. And it's not supposed to be 
So is that you have done an offense? However, many monks did not believe that it was an offense. Or some even consider, even if it is, it's not a big deal, just a little water left in the pot after using it. So, as the crowd is saying like that, the monk who committed the offense did not believe that he had committed an offense. So, he did not confess his wrong. These offenses, now you know, there are seven classes from the most trivial to the highest, most severe. The highest, most severe ones are there's no way out, but a monk has to disrobe and leave the monk order, the severe one. But trivial ones and some mid-range offenses, the monk goes as a group and confess to one another. Bande, I have done such and such on that day because of I will not do it again and the other monk who heard it will say yes I heard your confession okay be very careful not to commit this again So that is the regular, regular routine that the monks do when they meet one another or in the same place. Or sometimes some monk would even ask another monk, especially, I would like to. Especially those who stay alone by themselves. When they meet another monk. So there are seven classes of offenses from the trivial to severe for monks. And this water pot and the outhouse offense is one of the lowest level. However, this is it. If one did not follow one of the most trivial offenses, considering that it's no big deal, it will get into a habit and it could grow, it could gradually progress to transgress more and more severe offenses. The law of cause and effect. And if one offended any offense and if the monk does not confess, one must be banished from the group. Once expel, once is banished. Okay. The smaller one, it is not that you have to disrobe. Once you expel, the privilege 
of attending regular offense co confession or sharing the same sima for a certain occasion for confession going the arms round together eating meals together all these privileges are taken away lost and a group of monks that follow the Phenia expert monk wanted to banish this guilty monk because he did not confess. But at the same time, there's another group, another group follow a monk who is well versed in Sutta. The first group follow the monk who is well versed in rules and discipline. This one is this group follow a monk who is quite sharp in sutta. And the Vinaya monk asked the sutta monk, the leader to the leader, whether he knew it was an offense to leave water in the pot in an house out after one has used it. To which the Sutta man reply, No, I did not. However, the Vinaya monk spread the news that the Sutta expert did not even know it. it did not even know it was an offense. Just went around and talked about it. He couldn't keep his mouth shut. Maybe he wanted to uplift himself by putting the other monk down. That made the Sutta monk angry. Because he has already admitted his ignorance to the rules and that should be the end of it. Confess, end of it, but the other monk keep on prolonging by, let's use the word gossip, gossiping around, gossiping the news. So the Sutta man organized some monks to stand with him and go against the other group. Because now the Sutta man is taking a stand. He believes that it was a small offense and had committed mindlessly, heedlessly. Because of that, the monk should not be banished or shunned. Now, the Sangha at the Gosita Monastery split into two opposing groups. Each held their ground with conceit and did not compromise. Finally, the news reached the Buddha and the Buddha simply uttered a few words. The Sangha has split. This is the first time nine years in his ministry, the first time two groups of monks disagree. and dug a trenches. <clears throat> then the Buddha went to the group who wanted to banish 
the monk and told them what you has what you said is under the rule in other words you are saying according to the vinaya regardless using righteousness a monk should not be banished at the cost of breaking up the unity of sangha yeah you're right that monk has committed an offense but don't use the big stick of righteousness and banish it if the cost is you have to pay with splitting the sangha that's what the buddha told this vinaya group and then later the buddha went to another group the sutta group and say keeping the view that i have not committed an offense and there is no need to confess causing the break up of sangha is unworthy is that okay i didn't commit it or i don't believe i committed that's why i shouldn't confess it is a trivial matter what they are doing to me is wrong and then taking a stand based on it but the cause is you are breaking up the sangha that kind of act is unworthy for a monk that's it and then buddha carry on saying have faith have sada have faith and confidence in the buddha have faith and confidence in the dharma have san have sada keeping that sada in your heart one should review the view of the matter at hand the matter at hand is i didn't commit an offense or it is a trivial matter i don't need to confess but the price is the sangha broke up into two groups and the buddha simply say review on your own belief keeping sadda faith and confidence in your heart that said he told the two group separately what to do so in here it is worth noting buddha did not take a side then say i stay with this side or i stay with that side didn't take side but instructed both groups to do the correct thing and avoid confrontation do with with patience and forgiveness to stay in harmony to stay as a one united group regardless the two groups did not listen to the buddha even though buddha's speeches or instructions were truthful and beneficial but the timing was not right both sides were still brewing with anger and conceit so Buddha couldn't do 
anything. The monk still went for the arms round in two separate group. They still eat in two different places. And if one is using confection in the Sima, the other group will do it. the confession outside. They keep doing things with anger and conceit. So, the Buddha picked up his arms, bowl and ropes and left Gosika Monastery alone. He left the monks to simmer down their stubbornness and anger. So, when the people heard that the Buddhist has left Gosita Monastery because the Sangha, the two groups did not listen to Buddha's instruction. The people got angry because the people took refuge and learned from the Buddha and because of the monks, the Buddha left. So they lost all their opportunities, the people. So they were angry at the monks. So they did not go and pay respect. And they did not even deliver alms or offer alms. All the food become very scarce. So they got depressed. And then remorse set in. They came to their senses and they talked to one another and stay united later. At the end of the 10th Vasa, those monks follow Buddha to Savati city and beg for forgiveness. So, those are the two events worth mentioning something different which happened before the ninth rain retreat and after the rain retreat. The first one was before if the difficulty and challenges arises, don't run away. Face it skillfully. And the second one thought is if people cannot be patient and use forgiveness, it will be quite difficult to stay united. May all of you be able to take lessons from Buddha's teachings and may you be able to stay in peace and harmony with yourself and with your surrounding and practice mindfulness insight meditation and attain liberation as soon as possible. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much.